not actually sure what's going to occur. Uh, we have a lot of network cables and VGA cables up here, and we're going to hope for the best. So, um, starting at the far, far end is uh, Paul McMillan. Uh, Paul can raise his hand. I guess that's your left, my right. Um, yeah. And then we have a guy whose name is Alex, or at least that's what I'm going to call him today. Um, he's going to talk about uh, Punk Spider here in a bit. Uh, we have uh, Rob. Rob's, uh, he's internet famous, um, and probably real life famous too, actually. Um. <laughs> We've never met before, but I could already tell he doesn't like me. Um. <laughs> We have Dan, who we've chosen not to give a microphone to, and uh, myself. Um, so what's going to happen here is uh, uh, Paul and Rob are going to uh, talk about some large-scale uh, internet scanning uh, tricks. Uh, you ever seen like the uh, David Letterman uh, stupid pet tricks, um, you know, or stupid human tricks? Um, my favorite the guy could stop a fan with his tongue. I still was scarred by that as a child because I, I was actually not mentally but physically because I tried it. Um, and uh, um, they're going to talk about that, and then we're going to segue over to, I guess, uh, Dan, who's going to talk about the work that he's done, uh, uh, scanning cloud providers and things of that nature. Uh, Alex is going to talk about the work he's uh, done turning Punk Spider, arguably kind of an offensive tool, into a defensive tool. And then we're going to have a giant talk about ethics, um, um, which should be pretty exciting because we may get complaints from the internet as we do this talk. So uh, it may be like a real-time ethic discussion with a lawyer. So uh, anyway, uh, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Paul and Rob to get things going. All right. So um, I'm going to start with the demo because uh, then I'll have lots of time to fix it if it doesn't work. So what I'm about to do for you is I'm about to scan the entire internet on port 5900 for uh, VNC servers. Um, if you're running the appropriate cell phone networks and there is signal down here for you, your phone will get a packet from me in the next 10 minutes or so. Uh, the, what you see here is the web interface I've built for the distributed mass scanner. Um, I'm going to get started here. And so what we're doing now is these are jobs that are going into a job queue. And uh, I have seven servers around the world that are picking up those jobs and turning those into full speed network traffic. Um, with these servers, you can get about a million packets per second. I've got them all spitting out packets as fast as possible. You can see here the traffic graph from those. You'll notice that it instantly kicked up to about six and a half million packets per second. And a couple of the servers that are running here are not in this bandwidth graph. So we're probably putting out about seven million packets per second. And these are addressed at every machine in the IPv4 space, minus the blacklist of people who have asked to be excluded or people that we've preemptively excluded because it seems like a good idea to do that for the US government. Um, so what's impressive about what Paul's done here is, is that it, he has the world's record for the fastest internet scan. So uh, he's previously done it in 16 minutes, and now he's doing it in about, what, 10 minutes? Yeah, I'm hoping we'll get it 10 minutes if none of my providers have shut down any of my machines in the, since this morning. <laughs> and by internet scan, we mean the internet. So, uh, like, you know, how many people here have used a port scanner on their networks? Which is like everyone. So, um, and like, a, like in a lot of the port scanners, you can enter in like a, your CIDR address. So you do 10 slash 10.0.0 slash 16, because that's maybe your local network. And six slash 16 is a pretty large network of 65,000 addresses. And you try to run Nmap over that, it takes quite a while. And you can tune it, you can distribute it across a few machines, and it still takes quite a while. So what we're doing here is, and it's still, kind of a thrill to do it, is to type in 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 slash 0. And not slash 16, not slash 8, yeah. but slash 0, meaning all the bits. So the other fun thing we're doing here is, besides just sending SIN packets to the whole internet and recording what comes back, uh, which is, you know, it's useful, it's interesting, but open ports are don't tell you very much, because a lot of devices on the internet are running firewalls that answer yes to every SIM packet, you know, sonic wall type devices. And so if we want to know what's actually out there, the simple port scan isn't going gonna, isn't gonna to give us enough information. So what we're doing here is, in addition to the port scan, once the results from, as the results from the port scan come in, they are getting fed into a worker queue 
And these worker queues are connecting to the found open port and trying to begin the establishment of a VNC connection. Um, one of the interesting things about the VNC protocol is that there's an authentication method, which is number one in the protocol, which is no authentication. So if these VNC servers accept that authentication, no, 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 no authentication, then we move them on to the next phase in the queue, which goes and takes a picture of them. So what, so, you're, see what you're seeing on the left-hand screen... So th these are live results coming from his scan. They kicked off a few minutes ago. So, if you want to look yourself. So even better than the live results, you can look at these right now. Results.survey.tx.ai. If you're on the conference network, it's not available on the public net. Um, but yeah, so these are, these are machines that are somewhere on the internet that have an open VNC. <laughs> so, in addition to the seven, uh, in addition to the seven gigabit dedicated machines that are running the scans, there are also uh, 100. No, there are about 120 cloud servers that I spun up for the purposes of this demo that are running that follow-up processing, doing the VNC connection, taking the screenshot. Uh, running 100 servers, that sounds really expensive. At four cents an hour and they bill by the minute, it's not all that expensive. You know, the demo cost me four dollars maybe. So think about distributing your workload to the cloud because you can't run the SIN scans from a cloud provider, but you can do all kinds of other follow-up processing like, like what you're seeing there. So out of those 100, uh, 100 workers, it looks like we've got about uh, 10,000 worker processes that are online from that. So did you want to talk about any things you're seeing there, Vis? Sure, sure. So, all right, is this okay? Um, so, <laughs> yeah, this is, some of these, some of these are very, very face palmy, and and some people at some point. And this has happened in the past. We'll be scrolling, and the whole room will just burst out laughing. So what you're seeing here is um, a tool that I, I really like to use called Enload. Enload is a wonderful command line utility that will tell you exactly what the bandwidth is that you're utilizing on any given inter interface at that very moment. So instead of setting up like Cacti or RD tool or anything like that, you just Enload at the command line, and you get this thing. So this is cool. Right now, my machine is pushing 260, 274 megabit outbound to the internet. It's receiving about 25 megabit. This is approximately, what, a seventh? Something like that, a seventh or an eighth of the total hoard between myself and Paul. Um, this is a single machine that's um, a, 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 a hardware one U box and a colo in San Diego um, that, is, that is doing uh, part of the initial massive scan. So it's kind of like what Paul is explaining. It's a two-stage thing. The first thing you do is go and find open ports, and then you hand the open ports to worker processes that would, then will go and take screenshots. And you would not believe the types of things that people think would be a good idea to put a VNC client on. They don't think. <laughs> no. And, and in a lot of cases, you, you'll see desktops. In a lot of cases, uh, you'll see, um, we've seen everything like, I think my favorite from October of last year was the cow milking machine, which we may or may not <laughs> see this time around. Um, we but, shouldn't see it. I think they took that one uh, offline. We'll see other this, interesting things, though. So. Yeah. Um, we will see things like a full screen, um, mainframe terminal connected to a pharmacy that has open VNC on passwords. So you can sit there and watch people fill out prescriptions and like home addresses and like, hello HIPAA, right? Um, <laughs> look, Mr. Zal Zalanik's office. 14. 14? 14. Okay, hold on. <laughs> this one? You make me nervous, sir. <laughs> so oh yeah, so there's that, right? And there's phone numbers. So there's, you have people's names and phone numbers. Um, we could play the Johnny Long game, and we can say, like, um, let's look at you know, what he has in the system tray, right? We can do that. So um, it's, He, he it's, appears to have all the things in the system yeah. tray. <laughs> <laughs> Enough that I don't think VNC even made the cut. So, yeah, so like, we, we like other, in other cases, we'll see people, like, mining, um, like, doing gold mining and WoW. We'll see people playing video games, which... I can't imagine you get the best performance in the world when you're playing a video game that requires like full screen and graphics and stuff, and then you get that little thing in the bottom right hand corner. Anonymous is connected to your VNC server. Like, I, 
<laughs> some of these people are notified, right? You get a little pop-up in the bottom right-hand corner of your display that says, somebody just connected to your machine, and no fucks are given. They just they keep going. Like, <laughs> like, somebody's watching. Sweet. Yeah, so this is, this is one of the interesting things that we discovered is that it appears that the default behavior of real VNC, which is a very popular desktop VNC server, is that when you stop paying the license fee, in addition to bothering you, it takes away all the authentication. So that's kind of a dick move, but <laughs> it makes this a little more interesting. Um, so in the interest of time, because I said I'd give you 10 minutes, so I gave you 10 minutes. Sorry. Is there any last minute that you got one more thing you can hit? Make uh, this computer what? Uh. <laughs> Here, let me optimize that. Yeah. I, I just made um, Paul nervous by asking that question. You? Yeah, you did. Oh, here's someone's <laughs> kids. <laughs> um. Okay, so... Uh, the other thing probably to talk about is the blacklist. Uh, we run opt-out procedures. If you get hit and uh, you send us an email, you do the reverse lookup on the IP address, you get a little web page which says, hey, you know, contact us here to... I sent you the email with three intentions. Oh, yeah, you did. I uh, can't pop that up easily now. Yeah, Let's look um, at Dan's and we get all mail kinds school. of complaints. Yeah, so, so it's great because, um, so I run scans weekly, and I, I, I try out new scans, like last night I did, I don't know what SCTP is, it's a protocol like TCP and UDP, and it's used apparently in telecoms and LTE, and someone was mentioning SCTP ports in the LTE talk, so someone tweeted me and said, hey, do you support SCTP in your scanner, so I'm thinking, well, one moment, please. <laughs> so, um, so I added SCTP to the scanner, I still don't know what it is, but apparently it works, it, t it tests against the test utilities on, on Ubuntu, and so I scan the whole internet with it. So anyway, so I, I, I dread this because every day I, wa I wake up in the morning, I get all these complaints about people who send me abuse complaints saying, hey, you're scanning our network and please stop, which I'm more than happy to do if you tell me who you are and what your network is. Because <laughs> everyone's got this, it's, it's, it's this blinders on. They, they, they assume that I'm scanning them, that I already know who they are. I don't, it's really hard getting them over the hurdle to get them to realize I don't know who they are. I'm scanning everybody. And so we get this, these really weird emails. I sent a screenshot of one of them to these guys because I don't know how this connected. It's uh, a little slow. It hasn't even gotten to me. Okay. Yeah. So, and you, you get these threats, and like there's this, like every scan I do, I get this, an email from this Korean, I don't know, MSP or something that manages the network for the Korean National Bank. And they say, hey, we're a class A critical infrastructure. And I forgot the exact details, but it's really funny to read. And, and the, the emails themselves are pretty funny because, like, you know, yeah, they say you're, you're, I'm do, what I'm doing is illegal and blah, 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 blah. And, like, my scanner is up in Sweden and they're located in Korea. I don't know what the law is. But um, <laughs> it's really great, though, because then they copy everyone on the email that's in their IT department <laughs> with a list of, like, 20 people that all have, like, admin access to all their machines. I'm thinking... And yet, you're just asking for me to fish you, and like, <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to do that, but like, you, you, have, you send this the CC list, and like, it'd be wrong not to fish you. <laughs> and so, and yeah, so you saw, I saw the screenshot over here, and you can see that it's, this list is actually a lot longer than what Gmail is showing, because it's like, it's 30 people, I don't know how many people on that list. And so... Um, and so you get these emails, and you get these MSPs that try to hide their customer information by removing a few bytes from the so address. I'm going to jump in here and mention that the poor scan is done. Oh, so yeah, the poor scan is done. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the world's record. So that's the world's record for the fastest poor scan ever on the entire internet. It looks like it was a little, uh, it was about 12 minutes, a little under. So that's the fastest internet scan ever. So, um... So anyway, so I get these MSPs and they, they try to hide the information about their customers, but of course they're giving me all the information I need to know to totally reverse engineer everything about their corporation, their architecture, everything, and plus the whole B, the CC list. Cool. All right. So we're going to shift gears to uh, uh, this, who's going to talk about um, something cloudy, as yeah. far as I recall. <laughs> I'm going to talk about something cloudy. It's not the water. No. Um, so... Uh, 
I sort of started this whole process when um, I decided that it would be neat to start doing massive scans uh, based on Shodan results. And that started from, if anybody has read it, and I'm sure there are several people in the crowd who have, there was a consolecowboys.com, or console, whatever their blog was, a console, console, console cowboys blog post that talked about a guy who reverse engineered the firmware of a, an IP webcam he had and found out that there was like this anonymous back door that the manufacturer had put in where if you went to like the IP address of the camera slash anani, like A-N-O-N-Y slash mjpeg.cgi, you could see the camera's video feed. And um, he, he thought, well, this is fun, you know, I'll just go see how many of these things show up on Shodan. And he found like tens of thousands or something like that. So I took that, I you know, probably took that ball away from him and ran with it. Um, <laughs> and it sort of ballooned into this ridiculous thing where I spent a year literally finding all sorts of absurd cameras on the internet. And um, uh, it, it ended up me, me writing a lot, of, a lot of very poorly written Python code, which Paul helped me out with, uh, which then turned into scanning the whole, the whole internet. So I decided it'd be a fun, a fun thing to see. Um, people like the cloud, people like moving to the cloud, and, and there are people that still to this day believe that when you go to any cloud provider that they will somehow magically wave a wand and do all your security and IT and architecture for you. Um, I have actually been told straight to my face that I don't need security, Amazon does that for me. I'm like, well, kind of, but if I find you in this VNC screenshot list, like, nah, Amazon won't isn't going to help you. They're, they're going to laugh with me at you. <laughs> but um, so you know, I decided to see it would be interesting just to do a couple of, of small scans. And sadly, I don't have any like formal slides to present it. But uh, it's mainly text files, like uh, Grep said. Um, I scanned all the major cloud providers I could think of on port 3306 and port 1433, and um, nobody noticed. <laughs> Um, which was so, so I don't have Etsy services in front of me right now? What, uh, what, what? So 3306 is MySQL and 1433 is MS SQL. Um, I just wanted to see how many open SQL servers there were on the internet. And um, there were sort of three major bullet points that I took away from, uh, from that scan, which was um, one, um, there's more MySQL instances than MS SQL instances on Azure, which I thought was interesting because that's Microsoft's hosting platform. <laughs> I'm like, that's really weird. And then somebody later told me that you can actually run Linux stuff on Azure, to which I was kind of surprised, but I have no experience with Azure, so I was just surprised the entire time. Um, then um, Rackspace was an interesting scan because every single host that I found that was up was showing MS or um, uh, port 3306 is open, to which I, I, I it was like a 99.987 yeah, percentage. Yeah, you, I'm like, you made a mistake with the scan. <laughs> you're kidding me, right? So there's either a typo on my part, or there's something weird going on at Rackspace. I, I redid it. I think it was about four percent. Oh, it popped my bubble. Sorry. But, yeah. So you do um, really good science. <laughs> <laughs> there's, I can't math. Um, but uh, the, the, Seems legit. There's several interesting takeaways there, which was, number one, um, I probably scanned all hosting providers at least five times each, one time from a plane, um, and nobody noticed and I never got a single complaint, which is something very interesting to consider, which is, you know, us doing scans, or uh, me with my one box doing scans, is, is so far below the radar, the noise floor of what these guys have to deal with, and nobody's gonna notice. Um, and I wasn't scanning the provider's infrastructure themselves, I was targeting purely the clients because I'm, I'm sort of convolutedly trying to build a talk that describes the type of clients that are attracted to different cloud providers and then the security practices that those people do based on what providers they go to. Like for example, if you were to scan Slicehost or Linode, you'd probably get a lot of beardy sysadmins scream at you about an errant SYN packet, which happened, uh, not from Linode, I don't think, but it happened the other day. I, I had a very interesting phone call about a very, very, very angry Australian who may have been screaming into the phone about a single errant SYN packet, um, to which it makes me realize, you know, when you send that SYN packet, you can, you can fudge some of the data. If he's looking at, if he's looking at the packet trace, you can put, like, lol Dogecoin in, like, your TCP, like, um, the, it's just, just a SYN, right? So, like, you establish a handshake, yeah. you can fudge, yeah. yeah. So you can mess with people that are looking at their, uh, their packet logs. But... Um, so you can't scan from the clouds necessarily because um, the terms of service will prevent you. Like, certainly do not uh, go and spin up a bunch of EC2 instances and try and scan, scan from them. Although they, they it would probably be really fast. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's actually what I'm doing, so. <laughs> oh. Well, but, you, but, you're not, <laughs> well then. but you're not doing port scanning, are you? No. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, but the whole... Yeah. 
idea of scanning the internet and dealing with the complaints is a very interesting animal. Like, I've only seen two real major things. One was uh, with the camera stuff that I did, where one guy um, yelled at me because I wouldn't go through something like 400,000 JPEGs and pick out um, the baby monitors because he found them offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I, he re mean called me a pedophile because I wouldn't go through. Oh, I remember that. Before. Yeah, yeah was no, he, he, was, he was a real nice guy. Yeah. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then there was the guy from Australia yesterday who was screaming at my provider and he said that he would call the internet police, to which we were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. So I may have registered internetpolice.us and internetpolice.biz. I may have just... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> my, my leg of the scan may have just come from the internet police. Um, although... <laughs> yeah. Dude, you could get a card? <laughs> um... This, this, this was a, a, um, an alcohol-fueled piece of hilarity from, like, last night at 3 a.m. We've just spent the last two days sitting in the bar con, <laughs> just cackling and plotting and scheming and conspiring and getting graphics so made and scanning the Internet and writing code and, and more drinking and more cackling. <laughs> oh, I missed it. Oh, I can't see anything from over there, so I came over to see what was funny. But... Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get Dan to show you. So, uh, since we finished that first scan, I'm going to uh, do add a bunch more common VNC ports to the scan, and we'll just keep scanning since we're here, and uh, we can do that. Yeah, so. <laughs> we get, yeah. Sorry for the distraction. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, so the, the major takeaways from my leg of it was essentially um, there are you'll you'll. When, if you did decide to undertake this yourself, um, I did my first scan of the entire internet just a week and some change ago, and uh, I have a gig pipe on a box. I was seeing something like 280 megabit a second. Uh, if I could get more bandwidth, um, then obviously it would have gone faster. It took me about five and a half hours to scan the entire internet with just one box. So this is like, it is within the grasp and reach of anybody that has a gig pipe to the internet. Um, you can just pick up and scan the whole internet. But, but beware, you will find angry people. They will, it's not that they will come out of the woodwork, because you are meeting them in their woodwork. You are going to them and saying hello with one sin packet. Um, but yeah, some people get very angry. Uh, other people don't even notice. So um, in some cases, you'll see, you know, sysadmins and things like that. But. So, so how many people here have Verizon phones? Oh, yes. <laughs> so during Paul's scan, it, assuming we have signal here, he reached out and touched you. So if you have VNC on your phone, yeah. Paul will have grabbed, with no authentication, of course, Paul will have grabbed a screenshot of your phone. Yeah, uh, everything. It's kind of a big, kind of a big idea. Uh, it's also, I mean, to reiterate, I'm only touching the things that have no authentication. Um, if someone else were to go and, you know, try, the interesting thing about VNC is it's a, it's a password of exactly eight characters. It's zero padded and no VNC server that I know of has realistic rate limiting. So uh, there are a lot more devices out there that, that I'm certain are accessible. I can't do that because it's illegal, but just because it didn't show up in the scan doesn't mean it's not, dan not vulnerable. Um, the, you know, the takeaway is, can we, can we get like passwords on things by default and not have unauthenticated modes? Or, or, or firewalls so that you can't touch it in the first place. Yeah, firewall I mean, just would be good. Bow I, to it and all. Yeah, in October. Yeah, botnet of fridges, remember? Yeah. Botnet, that's awesome. I need my fridge to be online, you know. Like, if I can't VNC into my fridge, my life is over. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, to shift gears slightly, um, Alex is going to talk about the work he's done with Punk Spider. I don't know how many, how many people saw his uh, presentation last year on Punk Spider. Um, so Alex has been running with the ball ever since then. Um, he says it doesn't take up very much of his time at all. Uh, from <laughs> yeah, I can talk for the next hour. Or, or he said something to the effect of he was he's ruining his life working on this. But um, he also drinks Sam Adams out of the most hoity little glass. Like it looks like it's a Belgian ale, but it's really just an American. This was provided by you guys, actually. So. Was it really? Yeah. The glass or the beer? Oh, the glass. Yeah. Okay, because we don't give out beer, so oh, yeah. <laughs> that ended last night. I assure you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, can you wait a little bit of time while I make sure that this is actually working? Well, you, you want me to waste you, a little you, bit of time? Yeah, can you just so, say yeah, things? Can you give me the plug again, and I'll, I'll show the more, more. There are more lols that have funneled in since I lost the display. Why don't you show lols, and I'll tell a funny story. <laughs> okay. Okay. So in October, I scanned the internet, and uh, <laughs> there were it's a bunch of things. Such a funny way to open a story. So in October, I scanned the internet. You know, yeah. <laughs> not like I went to Disney World. It was. You know. And so. And for so, something that takes ten minutes, you're yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sorting through the results is the much bigger problem here. I mean, scanning the internet is quick and easy. Figuring out the results is the hard part. So I found a bunch of ICS systems that shouldn't be online. I sent them to ICS cert. Nothing happened. Um, so a reporter from Wired got in touch with me and wrote an article about a couple of the things I found. Among the things I found were three uh, hydroelectric power plants in New York. Um, we could, the Wired reporter and I couldn't track down the, uh, the operator, but when the Wired article happened, suddenly people came out of the woodwork who could track the operator down. So they, they got in touch with the person and they said, well, okay, so I've put a password on two of them, but the guy who runs the other one doesn't want to be bothered. So it's probably in those results. Um, I, it was when I looked a little while ago. Uh, so this is, this is part of the problem, is this attitude of systems operators. My system isn't important enough. I don't want to put a password on it. If anyone hacks it, I'll just unplug the modem and replug it and get a different IP address. That'll stop them. A little unclear on the... Are you spitting out 1400 by 900 or whatever, 1440 by 900? Oh, because that monitor won't sync to 1440 by 9. Yeah. Um, do you guys see his screen? Yeah, lower the resolution. I heard both answers, which I appreciate the person trolling me. Uh, <laughs> you see it? Okay. Are you all trolling us? Because <laughs> that would have been awesome. <laughs> you got to think fast, people. You got to really go with that. So. All right. So you guys can see Punk Spider, right? Yeah. Sweet. Awesome. Uh, let me remember what the hell I'm going to talk about. Talk about this thing so many times and I don't even remember what it does. Um, okay, so anyway, so yeah, I'm here to tell you about how uh, we actually turned Punk Spider into a defensive tool. So um, everybody at my talk last year, um, we sort of focused a little bit on what you could do with it in some aspects of defense, but um, I did mention it had like huge offensive potential. So kind of decided to go the other way with it. Um, definitely didn't want to like get arrested and stuff. So um, <laughs> we, went this way and, and it's actually worked kind of well for us. Um, so the first things that we actually had pretty little slides that I wanted to show you and I'm completely forgetting to do that. Um, yeah, so basically the things I'm gonna tell you about, um, let that load, load, bitch. Okay, so the things I'm gonna tell you about um, that have been like really big updates, so we just released this like last week um, are, you know, we built a new UI basically for a broad audience. So one of the big ideas for Punk Spider was that I didn't want it to just be usable by the security community, right? So I wanted it to be usable by like absolutely everybody. Um, I, we added a bunch of new vulnerability types that we're scanning for, I'll show you all that stuff. Expanded search features, bunch of cool stuff there. Um, we're also building uh, like blacklists and whitelists of hosts uh, so that you can import into whatever it is that you folks are using these days. Um, and we built a pro Chrome plugin, which I'll show you all about as well. Um, so yeah, first kind of use case for Punk Spider um, in terms of defense. Um, let's say you're like a typical user, right? So you don't know a whole lot about security. Uh, you've heard that people are stealing things online, right? Uh, so you want to buy a new road bike, right? For some reason you want a German road bike because whatever. Um, so you can actually go online to Punk Spider. Uh, you type in uh, the website that you found. You found this website, roadbike.de, which will set, uh, sell you some road bikes. Um, I don't know, I, I don't know what you're into. Um, but anyway, so uh, you go in, you search, you just very simply press enter, uh, your uh, wireless connection drops and you look like a jackass in front of everybody. Um, <laughs> and then you try it again and you look cool. Um, just hypothetically. Yeah, just hypothetically. hypothetically. Yeah, this is just, I appreciate this is kind the of a, scenario. It's yeah, some role yeah, playing we're doing here. Typical yeah. story, yeah. Yeah, it's a little role playing. Yeah, get into it. <laughs> Um, so uh, anyway, and you see that this has some vulnerabilities to it, right? So even if you don't know anything, you know that something's wrong here, right? There's a big red thing right here. 
Um, kind of a small detail, uh, and you see that the risk here is one. So in our documentation, we basically say like, anything with a risk greater than zero, like, get the fuck away, like, run, don't go there. Um, and for you actually, you know, security-minded folks, uh, you can actually see all the details and, you know, see the URL with, with all the uh, vulnerabilities in it and stuff like that. Could you try, like, what, healthcare.gov? Healthcare.gov, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, well, I would do it. Uh, now I'm going to look stupid because I can't, um, because we don't scan .gov or .mil. Uh, but if you guys really want me to, remember uh, that thing you said about not going to jail. I just want. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't hack where the requests, law enforcement is. If I get enough requests for it, I will consider doing it. Okay, so, so uh, next year at ShmooCon, I will show you healthcare.gov. Well, assuming they'd let you out. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, what the hell? This is going to go bad. <laughs> you guys are all a bad influence. Oh, yeah. Come on, guys. All the cool kids are scanning healthcare.gov. Um, I just did. <laughs> yeah, I also want to thank all of you for being way more likely to get arrested than me. So, yeah, thanks a lot. That's awesome. It's like being chased by the bear. <laughs> Just hang out with people who are more yeah, criminal, right. and you're okay. Yeah, it's perfect. I might sure sell I weed, but this guy kills people, so. <laughs> uh, anyway, so a couple other cool things you can do. Um, well, one thing we did was we built uh, whitelists and blacklists, right? So really, really simple. These are just lists of, uh, I'll show you the blacklists here for a second, and I'm gonna scroll down just to show you that there's a shitload of sites in here. Um, or my browser's gonna crash. Uh, it's one of those two. Oh my God, like. Anyway. Did you get bit by every demo, you know, gremlin today? Yeah. Like this is just, you, it all fell on you. You're <laughs> the last guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but basically I just wanted to click here and just show you that that's a shitload of sites. Um, so this is, you know, we are dealing with internet level data. Uh, oh, you know what, first thing I really should have talked about was, uh, how many of you have actually heard of Punk Spider? Okay, all right, so that's more than, more than last year. Uh, last year it was like three dudes who thought I was the guy that built Shodan. Um, <laughs> but I get, I get that too, since I did a lot of Shodan research. Same yeah, thing. nice, yeah. No. Like, oh, you're that guy, nope. Um, and then they're really disappointed. Um, so anyway. Uh, it was so, Satoshi that built Shodan, right? What Punk Spider is, obviously, is it's a huge vulnerability repository. It's built on a distributed scanner uh, that we built. Works over a Hadoop cluster. Um, I originally was really vague about like where we hosted it and, and how we did the whole thing. Um, but since I already mentioned we're on EC2, um, we use Amazon EC2 for uh, most of our scans. We obviously proxy everything through some like really shady Romanian shit. Um, but you know, pre it's pretty much EC2 uh, and a little bit of rack space. Um, and I, I wasn't actually going to tell you that, so it's a little, it's a little uh, free stuff. Yeah. Anyway, that? That? yeah, right. <laughs> stupid inner dialogue. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> God, you're hot. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> uh, anyway, so whitelist, blacklist, right? So that's really cool. Um, probably the best thing though uh, that we've done to actually like help users out um, is we've made it really, really easy to. Um, you don't actually have to go to Punk Spider to find if you're on a vulnerable site or not, right? Uh, so we built a little Google Chrome plugin. Uh, if you see this little spider at the top right here, um, it basically will warn you if you're on a vulnerable site. Uh, if you're not on a vulnerable site, it'll turn green and it will be happy and, and you will be happy. Um, so here's a nice example of that. Um, let's say you're a really big fan of Nina Dobrev. Um, she's apparently from the Vampire Diaries. I had no idea who she was, but it, just seemed like an interesting site. Um, but anyway, uh, there's apparently a vulnerability uh, on this website. Uh, all it does is it shows a little red X, right? So this is stupid, simple stuff. Like, I I'm hoping that people install this and they're able to use it. It's really unintrusive, uh, really simple. Like, it basically just says, get the hell away from this site. Now you can click on it, of course, and you can get additional details. Um, so uh, if you actually did want to go and, and, you know, for security folks, if you actually wanted to see the vulnerability that's causing that, you can go over here and you see the vulnerable URL. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, click on that and see what that is. Um, so really simple attack. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
And what it looks like, this one's even worse, actually, than a lot of the ones you'll find. Um, it looks like it's on a hosted server. Um, so you see a lot of, like, cPanel stuff over here. Um, so even folks that maybe aren't associated with this application in any way are going to get owned because of this. Um, so that's bad. Um, but anyway, you know, other sites, uh, of course, are going to show green. So really simple. All right, this didn't find any vulnerabilities. Uh, you're welcome, it says. Uh, not really, but I think that would be funny. We should add that. Make a note. Um, anyway. Uh, are you actually pointing to someone, or you just have like a... Just in general, like everybody make a note. Make a note of it. Yeah, oh, okay. please. Well, and, do you yeah. refer to yourself in the third person yeah, often? All the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, what the hell was I talking about? Um, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. It's, this happens even without you. Um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, security or something. Um, <laughs> right. So, uh, so some additional things you can do. Um, uh, we added a bunch of filters. So if you're doing like security research um, or security research, um, <laughs> you can just enable all the filters here uh, and view everything that is vulnerable just by putting a little star over there. Um, so we see uh, there's that's 10,276 pages of vulnerable domains. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly how many websites that is, but it's a, it's a shitload. Um, and uh, what else? Science. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're between it. Metric shitloaded yeah. a little. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to get too technical, but it's a shitload. Um, it's precisely a shitload. It's precisely this is what you get on Sunday, okay? Exactly. <laughs> like you're waiting around all weekend, and you got this. So it's your fault, too. <laughs> Um, that, that's all I can remember uh, to talk about. Uh, that's, uh, oh wait, here's, are you guys laughing at me or are you laughing about the nipple covers website that's up on the screen? Yeah. To burn, to burn. If, you, if you need self-adhesive nipple covers, don't go to pastees.com.au. Buy American nipple covers, damn it. Anyway. All right, on that note, um, we got a few minutes to talk about ethics and to take questions from the audience. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, one thing. Can I say one more thing? I just wanted to thank these people before I forget. Uh, Jay, Mark, Amanda, they're the volunteers, the community, and everybody. Um, this, uh, a lot of the stuff that we built was from, uh, um, I just interrupted Bruce Potter and he looks no, kind no, of No, 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 it's me, so. totally, I interrupted you. I'm yeah. a real jerk, man. You um, can go right ahead. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I just, what the hell was I talking about? Um, yeah, oh, uh, so a lot of the features that we built. Uh, ah! <laughs> Make you nervous yet? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the features that we built um, is, is stuff that was suggested by the community. So, like the firewall rules, that was not my idea. That was some dude at ShmooCon last year that yelled that out during the questions, um, and we actually built that shit. So, um, same with the uh, the uh, browser plugin. Uh, that was somebody else's idea. I don't remember whose. It might have been that guy right there, Mark, who actually helped me build it. I don't remember if it was your idea, but it was somebody's idea that wasn't mine. Um, so we actually do like build shit that other people suggest. Um, and we really do like to hear about, you know, ideas and suggestions. We have a little forum, discourse.hyperiongrade.com. Uh, if you want to suggest anything, you want me to reformat anything, like I always actually... Your hard drive? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, that's not what you meant. Yeah. Uh, and I got to say, like, it's... Um, I, I like the interface. Um, years and years ago, uh, myself and Beetle and a few others moved to this thing called the Hotspot Defense Kit, back when, like, people actually cared about wireless security. And... Um, the idea was to try to find rogue APs, and it would put a little ball up on top of your, whatever the thing on top of a Mac's called, and you bar, whatever the hell it is. Um, and if it was green, you're okay, and if it was red, you weren't. And it was like, you know, most users are morons. Um, even even smart security users are generally morons, and, and but at least we, if we're not colorblind, realize that green is good and red is bad. Um, and, you know, when it's red, you can stop using it. So, you know, um, big props for making something that's, brain dead enough that anybody can recognize what's going on. So good job. Thanks, sir. Um, on that note, um, uh, I'd like to open it up for questions and uh, any war stories about um, ethical uh, conundrums that these people have had. Um, I mean, you guys have been scanning the internet for a while now, and I, obviously you get um, some, some complaints. Um. Oh, go to go to go to one fourteen. I like the ice cream theme, so I thought we'd keep going. <laughs> <laughs>
This is, this is a frozen yogurt display. A frozen yogurt display? Can uh, you make frozen like... yogurt go on the floor? No. <laughs> Paul, well, I don't know. What do you think that is? Oh, you can't see it. I can't see it. I'm we just, dude, I'm... We can't see the display. <laughs> Actually, if you turn that, that's the monitor, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that helps. Yeah. That. Um, go to 114. There's a... You can see um, somebody has already tried to do, like, shell injection. So, like, you can see... <laughs> yeah. I yeah, that's it. the one. Oh. Yeah. Is this one? Where is it? Oh. Yeah. Where it says cmd.exe? <laughs> yeah. So, like, obviously we're not the first people to find these open VNC servers. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, I keep saying to people, like, I've had press interviews where people are like, oh, my God, you're doing this revolution? No. We're, we, honestly, the White Hats, we're, like, ten years behind everyone else. And we are just now getting around to convincing people that what we're doing is okay. And, and hilariously and sadly, part of that argument is... The bad guys have been doing it since the 90s. Can we do it, please? And one, one of the funny things is, is that uh, we, we all, if, if you send us an email and say, hey, we don't like getting scanned by you, please put us on your exclude list, and we're happy to comply. But I, I keep wanting to tell them, though, you're kind of thinking about it wrong. You're asking the white hats to stop scanning you. <laughs> Yeah, th this is There's kind a of different way to prevent the problem. Yeah, right. it, it's probably it probably the reverse is probably what you want is you want the white hats to scan you because I'm providing it as a free service. I was gonna say, has anyone actually thanked you? I mean, it, it kind no, of no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 <Thank> you. Yeah. <laughs> So you know it's it, it's it's interesting because the um, there's this weird line between um, security research and extortion in some people's minds. Um, you know when uh, again we were doing a lot of uh, wireless security stuff, people would come to me and they would you know say, oh I was scanning the business park next door as war driving and I found this company with an open access point. And I was going to stop by and tell them that they had an open access point and you know I do consulting and if they want I can help them lock it down. I'm like now you have to understand from a business owner perspective they may thank you or they may think you're trying to extort them and they'll call the cops. Um, and it's the same sentence you're going to speak and it's all about how they interpret it. So, um, you know, when, when you scan someone and you find something vulnerable, it's, you know, if you tell them, are they going to come after you? Um, I don't know. I mean, no one, literally, no one's ever said thank you. Yeah, well, our policy is always that if we, if we notify you, we do it for free. Right. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, does it have an acid tank? No, I, I haven't <laughs> found that one yet. Oh, that's the one on the roof, right? <laughs> no, one, of the, one of the things that I found that I presented about at a different conference was um, a pool control system that had an acid vat and that you could control um, the, the, the valve on the acid vat. So if you felt like it, you could dump all the acid into the pool. And I told people politely, don't give me control of the acid tank. Why would you do that? <laughs> it's, no. 189. Very sad person at 189. Well, that one is like an entire Korean billboard system. So, um, are there. <laughs> <laughs> I told you there would be porn. I, I think someone just trolled you. Like, seriously, there's no other rational reason that anyone would ever type porn into Google unless they never heard of. I wonder what kind of porn I would like. Porn. Well, okay. According to the screenshot, it's Mexican porn. It's, it's google.com.mx. They're at work. <laughs> and there you go. Good night, we're out. Um, <laughs> So yeah, ethics, yeah, exactly. It's like, so here we are, we're sitting here, we're in D.C., you know, we're having a good time, and we're poking this stuff out. So I'm just going to ask you, is it legal? I mean, straight up. Well, I, so... That's a good answer, I like, that was well informed. So it's not illegal until you get, go to jail for it, but the, I mean, what's going on here is... It's not illegal to go to jail for it? I don't know. Until you go to jail. Go to jail for, oh, oh, right. Yeah. That's why I tell I mean, the cops, were you speeding? I'm not in jail. No. The, was it illegal? The legality of it entirely depends on how much money you have to throw at the lawyers. No, no well, that's, that's the civil problem, you know, the criminal problem, usually, well, never mind. Anyway, so yeah. the, the U.S. law says that you're accessing the system without authorization. Now, these protocols have something in them that's clearly called authorization. You enter the pa using your password or just a password. 
And what Paul did with his scripts is very clearly say, no, only when the thing says there's no authorization needed do I connect. So, yeah, it sounds good, but tell it to the lawyers, tell it to the prosecutors. Yeah, I mean, the, another, another example of something that I didn't do is most of these real VNC servers are vulnerable to an auth most of the ones that are not in the result are vulnerable to an authentication bypass, where if you say, if, if they return, you know, you need a password, and you say, well, I'm not using one, they're like, okay. <laughs> I didn't do that. I could have, but I didn't. Um, so, um, so this is closer to taking a screenshot of a website. Do you, um, I mean, do you treat domestic um, uh, complaints differently than international complaints? I mean, no, I, com I complete the, I, I exclude complete anyone them? who will tell me what to exclude. You complete me. I complete you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if the complainant is kind enough to include the host that they want excluded, we're happy to exclude the host. Have, um, uh, I mean, do people ever indicate that they're going to take action to take these systems offline? Oh, yeah. Well, there was the angry guy in Australia from, from the other day. Oh, you mean, you mean in terms the internet of the, police. the things we found? Or yeah, like, I mean, they say, can you exclude me and I'm actually going to fix the problem? Or uh, I, have, I have talked to a bunch of people about their problems. The only people who were thankful and uh, fixed the problem were the people from the McGill Physics Department who asked me to exclude them. And I gave them some results from other parts of the university, and they were like, oh, we'll go deal with that. Well, there you go. One of the fun threats I get is they threaten to uh, firewall me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'll take away all your fun then. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't. I can't give nearly as good presentations if we don't have all these stupid servers to connect to. Um, anyway, any questions to the audience? Because we're going to have to wrap this up and retool for uh, there's a question on the far side. It will make this harder. <laughs> so IPv6, of course, as we all know, is theoretically impossible to scan all the IPv6 address space, at least until like another 60 years when Moore's Law catches up. But um, there's actually lots of tricks you can do because there's only so many uh, ranges, that, you know, slash 64 has been allocated. And within a slash 64, it tends to be fairly regular how they do that then to your MAC address, and then the MAC address is itself, the first three bytes are a vendor code, and so you can reduce that. So you, there's lots of tricks you can do to reduce the IPv6 address space, but still, yeah, basically most all the stuff's not gonna work on IPv6. Here's one of those exploit scripts that got caught in the open Word doc. <laughs> That's awesome, on the left here. I haven't found Rick Astley yet. <laughs> I'm gonna if you're quick I'm with your phone, you could. <laughs> There's more porn on there too. Over here. Oh, is there? Oh no, that's. Not just ignore them. Just you can ask her. It's fine. <laughs> that's actually just an Arduino thing. Alex, huh? here's a question for you. I'm sorry. What was that? I was. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Yeah, we don't have anything besides them just being able to go to the search engine and actually search for their own website. Um, we, we have gotten people that, that have kind of searched themselves and they're like, oh, shit, uh, <laughs> what do I do? Um, and, you know, we typically would just help them out with that. Um, but, uh, like, what, what were you picturing? Like, like, I see. Yeah, so that's, that's, yeah, that's a good question, actually. We, um, so that's technically not a, as simple as it sounds, right? Um, first of all, you would have to find the proper email for the website owner. Um, if you're actively informing other people that don't own the website, like, for example, if we make a mistake, like, maybe we find, I mean, maybe there's just a huge list of, of emails on the page, and we parse it, and we, you know, blast an email to 50 people that are unrelated to the website. We're actually, like, notifying them about the vulnerabilities on somebody else's site. Um, so we aren't sure exactly how to work around that problem yet, but. Who is records suck though? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so the comment is, um, those of you in the back, um, that why don't we just pop off an email to um, you know, web admin at domain and, and see if it works. And you know, maybe we'll get some, maybe we won't get some others. Um, the only reason we haven't done that is because we haven't thought of that yet. So uh, I'll write that down and we might actually do that. All his good ideas come from ShmooCon audiences, so yeah, um, right, yeah. as it turns out, <laughs> Alex doesn't really think of new things, he just does all of the work for you, so uh, he's horsepower. We'll take one more question, we're going to have to wrap it. Um, how do you, where do you get the list of what domains for sites and scan? Uh, so we built a distributed crawler as well um, that, that works with it. So we, we just have like a seed list, it's like a, just Alexa's like top one million. Uh, then we crawl those, then we recrawl those, and crawl them at, at a certain depth. So um, it's basically like exactly how like Google does it. You know, just a distributed MapReduce crawler that we built uh, that, that does that for us. There's an Alexis top of one million. There is. Oh my God. Yeah. Are there websites? There. Uh, anyway. Um, it's all porn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to have to get up and do the closing ceremony. So I want to thank you guys for participating in our experiment. We really appreciate all your work. So. So we'll get to the closing ceremonies um, shortly, like two or three minutes. Branson, do you know where Heidi is? Oh, okay. We'll get going in just a minute.